Guys, we finally made it. Simo and MBT shouted me out in this recent episode of History of Jank. They've been using my list on multiple different episodes for quite a few episodes now. They kind of stopped, and now they're back on it again, which is really hype. And I even got the shout out. So all of our dreams have came true, which is why, of course, we had to do our due diligence. We got to react to this video. So uh, we're going to do a reaction to them playing my decks yet again um, from my website, tcgrewind.com. Um, and as always, I just want to give a disclaimer. This video is not intended to like flame or make fun of them. Um, it's just strictly so I can point out the flaws or misplays and like how they're approaching the like gameplay of these decks and kind of help you guys better understand how to play these decks a bit better and even understand the September 2011 format a bit better. Uh, because quite frankly, you know, there, there's a lot of skill involved in it and it's the best format that's ever existed, you know? So make sure you give it a shot if you haven't, cause it's a blast, but yeah, we'll just hop right into this video. Countless champions have been crowned throughout the history of competitive Yu-Gi-Oh! But what about the underdogs, the dark horses, the decks that upon first glance make you question everything you thought you knew about the game? In this series, both MBT and myself will be showcasing some of Yu-Gi-Oh!'s wackiest unsung heroes. Each episode will feature new decks, new strategies, and the results will be unpredictable. You've seen the history of Yu-Gi-Oh!, but this is the history of Jank. If you want 5% off any singles or sealed product, click the affiliate links in the Folks, we've reached the bottom of the barrel and we are still scraping. Thanks to the kind folks at TCG Rewind for supplying these... You heard it, guys. They, they find... It, it. Mama, I made it. I'm famous now. Uh, I can retire on my YouTube channel, you know, because everyone's seeing this video as well as the reaction video is going to hit the subscribe button i know you know make sure you hit the subscribe button um and yeah i'll, I'll be able to retire and build all the old Yu-Gi-Oh decks i want and uh yeah all that stuff that being said let's take a look at this wheel because they brought back the wheel and i'm kind of excited about this because this not only shows that they're going to keep playing decks from my website because all of these are on my website um, but it also kind of tells us what some of the next episodes can look like. Um, so one of my favorite things here, like we, we, we got windups, which is really, really spicy. Um, I, I'd be super stoked to see that get showcased. Jurak and Ojamas and then Psychics. So all these decks are like relatively jank, but Psychics I actually put on my list as tier one. I think this deck is very, very good. I'll... Like, so I'm kind of excited. I really hope they get to this deck and showcase it because they'll probably see how strong this deck actually is. Um, so yeah, I'm definitely looking forward to that going up there. Um, but yeah, we'll, we'll see what he gets. Truly heinous decks for us. One thing that I've missed on History of Jank and History of Yu-Gi-Oh! is the wheel. And Jank seems like a perfect time to bring it back. As a result, the four decks that I have the potential to play in the four decks... Especially because my website has 72 decks to choose from. You could make this wheel a lot bigger, you know? You, you could go crazy. Yeah, that's what they should do, because it, it's kind of sick. So that Alex has the potential to play will be decided for these next couple of episodes by a spin. So let's see what our first match is going to include. Come on, big money, no whammies. If you think you know what this deck is going to look like, think again. True. <laughs> this is my uh, this is my spicy list. Also, uh, we're on we're on Simo's part now, and you know he's gonna spin the wheel. But uh, we know he lands unfortunate ladies because that's what the thumbnail is. So we'll take a peek. Um, I don't know what Maku Mech is. I I have no idea what that deck is. So I. It, that might be another 2011 list he got, but it'd be interesting if it's a, yeah, I don't know. It might just be that like skill drain type deck. I'm not sure. Um, we see ancient gear, we see rocks done, and then we know he lands on fortune ladies. Um, excited to see these two get played out as well. Um, but yeah, interesting, interesting to know, but we already know he lands on fortune ladies, so we can skip ahead here. Let's jump over to the deck building part another episode of the history of Yu-Gi-Oh! Today we're going to be looking at one of the best decks of the 2011-2012 Yu-Gi-Oh! season. I'm speaking of course about Wind Up. I'm pretty sure. It, let me just take a big sip of water and see what series we're filming for today. <laughs> okay.
Okay, so oh. not exactly the windup you're used to. You see, windup wasn't historically powerful until they had had a couple of set releases under their belt. The reason for that is early windups sucked. Sure, Windup Factory was released in the first wave, and it rivals even Black Whirlwind in terms of raw True. card advantage. But that card advantage is absolutely meaningless if those monsters can't get out of your grip and onto the field. For that reason, it took Windup Magician special summoning monsters from deck and Windup Shark special summoning itself from the hand for the deck to really get notoriety. Before then, it's just an endless conga line of dudes, which puts it in contention with every... He censored endless conga line of assholes. What happened? Did him, like, spamming that in the last episodes, like, demonetize some of their videos or something? <laughs> I'm upset about the censorship. R.I.P. R.I.P. Endless Congo line of assholes, you know? Um, that being said, Magician is actually legal and playable in this format. It also was released in Generation Force. Except the thing I realized when building this deck, I when I put it together, I was like, how do I abuse Factory? Because Factory is still a very good card, which is why I felt like this deck could be functional in 2011. Um, because Factory, like you said, it, it's like a better Black Whirlwind. So, um... I felt like these cards here were enough, but I also realized when I tried putting Magician in, there was really no world where you actually resolved Magician unless you're, like, setting it for a turn and then, like, hoping they swing into it then like or flip summoning it and then, like, normaling a dog and specialing from deck. It, it just, like, no matter what, it just didn't feel very good. It felt way too slow. So that's why I put this deck, the, like, together the way it is, where it's basically a rank 5 strategy, um, and... Like, for example, Adrius and Tiris are released in Gen Force as well, and they really didn't see any play at the time because there wasn't a really good way to do it. But I actually feel like this windup engine puts together a really nice way to make rank, rank fives, and Tiris is actually a nutso card. Like, it's why I think this deck isn't that bad. Is like, if you make Tiris and put it on field, there's not a lot of stuff in 2011 that deals with Tiris very well, if I'm being completely honest. It's actually a really obnoxious card to deal with. In addition... To the fact that we have, like, this engine of, like, volcanic shells um, and, like, you know, like, a quick draw engine to potentially do some synchro plays. Even with unknown synchron, you can, like, special summon it like a cyber dragon. Then normal summon one of these guys, search another one in synchro. Basically, it just means, like, you're always replacing yourself with these guys and then turning them into, like, a rank 5 or a synchro play, which I think is, like, pretty good. Um, the one thing I will say, like, juggler is just, like, the least terrible windup that's left in the pool between these guys from gen force the only reason why it's in here in reality is if you don't need another one like level modulator you just search this so you can pitch it off of like quick draw or even like drill warrior um to like you know constantly just cycle into your good cards to go for rank five play so this deck is a rank five spam deck with like a weird like synchro engine this is probably one of the most unique extra decks you would see at this time um, you know, like, like I said, this deck didn't really technically exist historically. This is just my kind of homebrew for it. Um, and like, you know, like we have these like monsters to summon with like quick draw. So like in the event that you have like dog plus a quick draw, you can make junk destroyer. You can pop a card for like the level three, you can make a drill warrior. And then with like unknown synchron or glow bulb and any of these guys, you can make either of these two level sixes and with just like juggler or war or soldier without like level modulation you can make a catasaur so that's where like everything in this extra deck is weirdly like playable um one thing you might know is like there's no utopia instead it's uh wind up zenmeister this is just so you can trigger factory with the rank four um there's a world where i felt like that would come up and the space is actually kind of tight in this extra deck um other than that yeah, it's, it's a very unique deck. There, there's a lot of weird things you can do. Shell has really nice synergies with, like, tuning. You can potentially mill it and then search. Um, and then, of course, with quick draw itself. Um, but, yeah, I'm excited to see what they do. Also, the reason for the single Torrential Tribute is when you make Tyrus, um, if your opponent wants to out it, they have to typically make monsters since it can't be destroyed by card effect. And that includes your own card effect. So you basically keep this Torrential on board um, because you can potentially blow out your opponent through a Tyrus, which I think is like really cool, especially because this has such little back row. People won't really expect to run into Torrential. Um, but yeah, that is pretty much the whole thing. I don't need to hear him talk about it because, like I said, I don't know if he knows everything about it. But yeah, for the most part, you pitch the jugglers to make other things happen. So let's look at the fortune lady. 
jump into the games. Okay, so full disclosure, I have never played this deck before. So the likelihood that nice. I'm going to fuck something up this episode is like 99.9%. .9%. But for the most part, the cards are pretty simplistic. And when you read some of these cards, you think, wow, it's kind of shocking that this deck never did anything. And I imagine we're going to end up seeing why that's the case once also, we gotta appreciate the fact that all Fortune Lady cards are just kind of like high tier waifus. You know, if if you're into that kind of like if people talk about Dark Magician Girl, but come on, look at these guys. Um, that being said, this is like one of my early iterations of Fortune Lady. I am still trying to figure out a way to make this deck good. Like, if you if you like are in the Tengu Plant Discord, I I constantly am trying to like find a way to make it good. There's all kinds of different ways to approach it. You do like a chaos variant. You could do a hero variant. This is like my pure fortune lady variant, um, and it it just it's so hard. Like it, it seems so good on paper with like water letting you draw cards, light letting you know bring out dark, um, and then fortune's future letting you draw too. Um, that's why we actually have dimensional alchemist in this, is so you can potentially banish one off the top and then fortune's future. Also, like one of the best hands you could possibly ask for in this deck is Allure plus Dark plus uh, Fortune's Future. Because if you don't know what this card does, it says send a Fortune Lady card from your Banish Zone to the Grave and then draw two cards. So, like, you could Allure, Banish, Dark. So you draw two, Banish a Dark, and then you send that to the Grave to draw two more, so it just becomes Pot of Greed, um, which is really, really good. So this deck has a lot of draw power. The issue it runs into is a lot of time the draws are pretty empty because all the cards are, like, pretty bad. One thing I made an adjustment to is, like, I cut Wind eventually because Wind is, like, when it's normal summoned, it can, like, pop back row or something based on Fortune Ladies. But that card... That effect's just terrible, and this card's just terrible. So I would definitely cut this, maybe throw like a BLS or something in here, um, just to have more like ways to banish cards in your grave once they're in there. Um, but yeah, it, it has potential plays to make with Burnman going into a lot of like unique synchros, and this also does run a rank five engine because Dark is a level five, and there's a lot of times where you can summon this um, off of like a light summon or like a call of a haunted and then just instant fusion into like a Tyrus Adrius, which again, those cards are really nutty in this format. Um, but yeah, that's pretty much all there is to it. I'll, I'll see if he has anything else to say and we'll probably move on. Once we actually play this set out. So introducing fortune ladies, the fortune ladies are an interesting set of spell casters that are able to, during every standby phase, increase their cards level by one. So that's a way that we can modulate our levels to potentially access different cards in our extra deck, whether it's the synchros or the exceeds package, but they also gain attack points equal to their respective level. So they slowly get stronger over each individual turn. They also revolve around the banishing pile as well. Fortune lady light sort of the main card here that when it leaves the field by card effect, you can special summon any fortune lady monster from your deck so what you're able to do is in tandem with the deck's field spell future visions each time a monster is normal summon target that monster banish it during the next standby phase of the player who controlled that monster return it to the field in face up attack position so ideally if you open these two you can act yeah, I guess that's another really cool thing is that Future Visions is a really interesting field spell where it basically turns off your opponent's normal summons and then you, in some ways, can play through it. One thing that bugs me about this archetype is Light is the only card that really benefits from Future Visions. Well, like, I mean, I guess, like, technically all of them do because if they come back in standby, they get that bonus level from being normal summoned. But in reality, like, I really wish that they would have added, like, another, like, clause to these cards, like, if they're removed from the field, like, just like how Light has. But I wish all of them had some type of clause like that, where if they're removed from the field, something happens. Um, but that's, like, getting into, like, Dragon Ruler type deal, and I guess maybe that's that's just too broken. <laughs> I don't know. But um, I do wish, if, if they all had something attached to it, it might make this archetype a bit better. Um, but, yeah, we, we don't really need to hear him blab about the deck. Let, let's move on. We'll check the gameplay longer ladies and gentlemen it's time to duel yeah <clears throat> joseph how does it feel for the wheel to be back in history of jank it feels like it's been months since we've used the wheel the wheel for history of jank it just feels right it just feels like we should True. definitely insert a level of chaos into our normal playing uh, will you get the unplayable deck with no win con? <laughs> I get the unplayable deck with no win con. And what flavor of unplayable deck with no win con will we be playing today? It's very fitting, spinning the wheel. Okay, so actually, I mean, as for like, I would say that 
Fortunately, is kind of like no win con almost. Like you're really just relying on dark. But for wind ups, like full disclosure, in my tournament of tournament series, when me and Joe were talking about decks to cut so, to like reduce the bracket down so it'd be perfectly even, we were talking about some of the jankier decks in the list. And I actually had to fight for this wind up list to stay in because I told him that it was a lot better than he thought. Joe said this deck is fake, and I'm telling you, this deck actually has a lot of plays it can make. So I'm excited to have it for each tournament tournament so I can kind of bust it out and show him what it does. Um, but yeah, it's it's a uh, it's a really cool deck. Fortune Ladies is a bit jankier, but I think this wind up deck has some form of potential because again, Factory is just a really nuts card. Considering your uh, sleeves of choice today, that you are turning the key of your deck's engine uh, <laughs> in a circular fashion to hopefully lead you to a victory to avoid the jank tank, but. That will not be the case because I will be victorious. You ready, buddy? I am. And just so you what? know, the wheel I'm turning is the wheel of time because I got Jurak. Let's go ahead. Because of the TCG Rewind. My bad opinion about Homestruck Ayo. is wrong. I know because I am Vriska. I have no idea what that means. Thank home you for the support. Struck. <laughs> home it's Homestuck, you plebe. <laughs> oh, it's Homestuck. I can't even read. But, buddy, I can't even read cards. You're expecting me to read patron names correctly? Oh, anyway, man. sorry. Every bad opinion about Homestruck. Home stuck is wrong. I know because I am brisk. I'll go ahead and repeat it just so that way they get their money's worth. I, I any appreciate case, it. Uh, Homestuck uh, fan three one six. I tell you what, I'm gonna do my best to couch as many references in this one as I can. Okay, so here's what's gonna happen. I'm going to since I accidentally uh, just hit you know rock or scissors by default and just pick to go first. I'm gonna roll a die and you can pick if it's odd or even. And if you are correct, I will give you the first play. So what are you gonna go with? We're gonna go with even. It is odd. Take that, you nice. idiot. My right, luck we'll has been thieved. What do we got here? <laughs> All right. Uh, this looks pretty good. Uh, we'll go ahead. Ooh, this is like best case scenario hand. Like, uh, Future Vision is plus light. Just lets you set up the turn one dark. And uh, turn one dark feels really good. Because if they don't have like an immediate out to it, then you kind of get the benefit of being able to um, like stack some levels on it. And then it starts like bringing stuff back, which is kind of cool and draw i will start with good old upstart goblin still with you start to see this being popularized um and yeah i guess we have the god combo here i'm gonna activate future visions jesus okay so this is a weird field spell every time a monster is normal summoned you target that monster and banish it during the standby the next standby phase excuse me of the player who controlled that monster return it to the field in face up attack position so if i were to hypothetically normal summon this copy of fortune lady light it immediately gets banished, triggering the effect of my future visions and making it so that Lady Light triggers since she left the field face up, we can use her effect to special summon a fortune lady from our deck. Now, fortunately for you, I don't really have any good targets because fortune ladies- It's dark. Dark is the best, uh, is the best target in the deck. Suck. So I don't really know like why I'm doing any of this. I think I'm just going to grab the best one, which is Fortune Lady Dark. Set one card and pass to you. Gonna need an MST here. Did not get one. Okay. Um. What? Le this is a level five monster. It is 2,000 attack. Wow. Yes. That is really, really funny. That is really <laughs> funny. I'm going <laughs> to. Unlucky. Uh, okay. You've identified the weakness of. This is actually okay if he like swings over because uh, during end phase he can just call the haunted back the dark and um, in standby phase the dark will go up to twenty four. That's assuming he just goes cyber dragon here. But, however, if he can make a tierist, that's actually insane. This deck, anything that can beat over two thousand attack. <laughs> you know what? I'm gonna get a little spicier. We're gonna go instant fusion. Okay, I'm down. I'm gonna pay a thousand here, and we're gonna grab ourselves a copy of Cybersaurus. We're going to go for a rank five here. We are. Uh, we are going to make Ardreus Keeper of Armageddon. Ooh. That's pretty cool. Okay. I'm going to go for... I think Tyrus is way better here. Like, if this is a live back row, which, I mean, to be fair, maybe he knows that the deck doesn't really have any live back row in this build. Um... If, if, if it's a live back row, then Tyrus is much safer, and it still is going to out both cards. Like, you can swing over the dark and then pop the future visions. I guess in this case, he's playing around, like, a damage step card or something, but I, I do think Tyrus is just better. For the effect here, and I'm going to pop the future visions. I do have effect Veiler for this. Ooh, that is mm. rough. That's really rough. I don't think I'm a fan of that Veiler there either. Like, why do you... like? Do you really care about future visions here? Like, do you care if we get this light back? I don't really think it does anything. Valor, at the very least, like, you could set the future visions over it and then maybe, like, synchro or something. I don't know. I just feel like that isn't an optimal Valor. 
So we'll go to combat. Either way, you're losing two cards. Here. Sadly, this will connect, so I will take 600, and my dark will go to the graveyard. All right, second main, I'm going to activate... Or I'm going to normal summon Wind Up Juggler. Uh, this will trigger future visions. See you next turn. Uh, go ahead. <laughs> see ya. Draw for turn. And then in standby, I've got some things to do. So future visions is going to trigger here. Uh, light is going to return to the field. Then I believe, since we're still in the standby phase, light will trigger and I will be able to raise her level by one. That is correct. Yes. Okay. So she's going to go to a level two who now has 400 attack. Very scary. I know. All right. I don't really have a clean answer here. So I'm just going to go to main one. Adrius is just a little too big. And then not to mention you have Juggler coming back. And you can technically set future visions over this to turn off, like he'll kill the Juggler. So it's like actually a one for one. He could call the Haunted back. Um, he could call the Haunted back the, what's it called? The Veiler, and then you can make a Synchro play. That might be why he's saying this going up a level, because making a level 6 feels a bit better than a level um, 7. But I guess this is also why Adrius and Tears are kind of nuts, because Catasaur can't out either of them, which feels pretty bad for uh, the player who can make a Synchro play. I think realistically, best play is just put this to defense, set the water, and pass. Because in reality, like, you want this water to go to grave, it, it's really useless in hand. Like, you almost never want this thing in hand. So, uh, your goal would be to, like, let them both die. Then when your opponent summons another monster, like, if they get another monster on board, you just swing over it with, like, you call the haunted back dark, swing over it, and then draw two by bringing back the water and hopefully draw some outs later. Juggler's kind of an asshole. Yeah, no, the five uh, pool, despite, you know, seeing historically little play, is kind of cracked. True. Ironically, I think the fact that Fortune Lady Light gained a level is kind of fucking me right now. <laughs> I would have had a way to somewhat answer this, but... You know what's fun is that that is not an optional effect. Yep, it is mandatory, so not much I can do about it. Uh, I honestly think the play is to just put Fortune Lady Light to defense and pass. All right, I will draw for turn. Standby, wind up juggler returns. Yes, it does. Uh, Ardreus, let's try for the for future visions. Uh, yeah, you got it. All right, now we can start comboing off. I'll activate Wind Up Factory. That is Ooh. a pretty good card. I'm going to normal summon Wind Up Dog and activate its effect to increase its level by two and attack by 600. A card that you don't typically see in Wind Up. Uh, this is like from the first version of Wind Up, but still not a bad card nonetheless. That's fine. Not a bad card here because it's going to trigger my Wind Up Factory. That is true. We're going to use Wind Up Factory to get a copy of Wind Up Soldier from deck to hand. Okay. Then let's just go to combat. Sure. Uh, we'll send the 1700 Wind Up Juggler in. Okay. Fortune Lady Light goes down. The 1800 Wind Up Dog. Take that. And the 2600 Ardreus. Okay. Didn't expect to get this far. Uh, back to you. We will draw. Oh. I'm going to fire. See, this is why it would have been so good to set the water. Because if this water was in grave, then Simo just has the most nutso play here, which is you normal summon, you call the haunted back the, um, the dark, then you normal summon light, special summon a water, then you have your dark attack over the dog bring back the other water so you get a draw four and then you can either make a rank four or yeah i mean i guess you just you get to make a rank four and you also get a draw four which is kind of crazy or another future visions oh well okay we're gonna call of the haunted targeting the dark that is in my still grave. with you Probably should have done this in standby, but mistakes were made. That's fine. So sure. she's level five. I will go ahead and put these here to denote that. Uh, and then we're going to normal summon another light, trigger mm -hmm. the future vision so she'll get banished, and that will trigger the light. And we're going to grab ourselves a copy of Fortune Lady Water. Yeah, here it is. And so since she was special summoned off of a Fortune Lady besides herself, I get to draw two cards. I'm also going to think about my position here. No! No, you don't put it in defense. So, like, since he didn't set the water, right, he can still technically resolve water twice this turn. All he has to do is special this in attack, have it run into the wind-up juggler, so you can, like, suicide into it, and then you can swing over the dog and bring it back again. So he can still draw four cards this turn had he done this. Like, putting this in defense is kind of useless. That's fine. 
Well, we'll start with Upstart Goblin. Let's uh, let's get some more info here. I'll take that thousand. Bounce the water back to my hand for Gen X Ally Birdman. Mm -hmm. Then we're gonna sink these two off for a Scrap Dragon. Still with you. Uh, I'm gonna go Scrap Effect here. I'm gonna target the Call the Haunted that's no longer doing anything, and I think I'm also gonna go after Factory. Gives you so much value. I'm not really nervous about anything else you have on the field aside from the juggler he has to go to the juggler to yeah anyway uh i guess i have to take out the juggler then so i'll do that all right may he rest in peace uh like i said i would like to do something about factory but i need to take out the priorities uh i'll go for the dog here i don't yeah so as you see like the same result would have happened he would have been able to pop the juggler in main phase two but he would have had a draw four had he played this optimally, which is obviously significantly better than just the draw two. I think I care about Adrius all that much. 1600 here, right? Yep. And then we'll go Trag. Oof. Got Trag. That's annoying. Okay. Uh, that's going to do it for me, buddy. Go ahead. All right. Stand by main. Future Visions is such a poo-poo card. Make sure I banish that Birdman before the comments yell at me. Well, shoot. Uh, I will normal wind oh. up Soldier. All right, future visions trigger. Back to you. On the no. So I mean, I gotta. It's it's a little fair because maybe they don't remember or maybe they're unaware, but they're still playing September 2011, which means that they have priority. So had MBT just summoned Soldier and declared priority, he currently has like a pseudo wind up rabbit right now through future visions. Like it will come back and then he can like, since they have the effect, they can only be used once while it's face up on the field. It'll get banished. It'll come back and then he can use the effect again for a double search, which is actually just insane. So yeah, it was really, really sad that he didn't declare priority because he just missed out on a free card. But like I said, I don't know if he knows that that's still a thing. It did die out in 2012, so maybe they're, like, unsure about the era. But literally every deck is coming from my website, which is all labeled under the 2011 format. So they should know, right? But that's tragic. Defensive. Okay. So I'll draw. Mm -hmm. Stand by. I get my light back. Sure. Nice. And I guess I'll increase her level by one since I don't have a choice. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm going to bounce fortune late. There's a couple cool options here. I'm pretty sure he can actually scrap dragon, pop the light and an up, like the factory and get the special summon from deck, um, which bouncing is also probably it's, it's probably better in all honesty, but it is kind of cool that this is one of the few scenarios where light won't miss timing. The light back to hand to special summon Birdman. Again, this card is not limited. It is not. Not yet anyway. Uh, and we will just know. If light didn't miss timing off the Birdman bounce, whoo, it'd be so good. It would actually be like a really broken archetype. Normal summon light again and trigger future visions. Yep. Uh, let's grab ourselves a dark. Mm -hmm. off That's good. Of this one. Um, I think wind only triggers on normal summon, which is kind of frustrating. Otherwise, that'd be nice to pop your factory, but uh, that's fine. So Trag is only 1,200 here, correct? Yep. Okay, so he's not too large. And Dark is a level five, so she is at 2,000. Uh, I think I'm just going to go to battle here. I'm going to go Birdman over Trag, Bonk. and then I'll go Dark over Adrius. And Does then he I'll know? trigger Fortune Lady Dark, and nice. I'll summon another. Yeah, this is like really crazy. Dark can bring back dark. Um, it doesn't specify like a specific fortune lady, and that that's really really good because now he can like make like a stardust dragon or something off this. So good on him for recognizing that. Not a lot of people know that. I don't think. Another dark from my graveyard. She does not say she can't summon herself, so that's pretty cool. Uh, mm -hmm. so we'll go two thousand twenty eight, and then second main. I'm gonna go scrap dragon. I'm gonna pop future visions in wind up factory. Sure. Uh, I'm going to sink Dark and Birdman, who will get banished. And we're going to go for Stardust. And then I will fire an additional Future Visions and pass the turn. All right. Stand by. I'll get my guy back. All right. Uh, what the fuck do we do now, then? Uh, let's go Pot of Avarice. Ooh. That's a sick card to have, sure. Yeah, it would have been sicker if I had five last turn. Yeah, we'll do this. Wow, that is like the two best it could have been. Okay, uh, I don't like that. Tuning. That's pretty good. Yeah, <laughs> sure. 
Uh, we'll get quick draw. Okay, mill one. Please whiff. Okay. I'm going to special unknown synchron in defense. Okay. I'm going to instant fusion. I'll take a thousand here. Is that the third instant fusion? Yeah, sure. I uh, will grab the Saurus. Okay. We'll make Bryo. Damn. Going to bounce two, attack over dark. Uh, we will lose to effect, Valor. I do not have Ooh. it. <sighs> They're out of here. All right. Uh, let's try it. I'll take three. Oh, that's the whole t that's the whole hand. So back to you. <laughs> now, unfortunately, I do not also get my uh, Fortune Lady Light back per its effect because this is a new copy of Future Vision. So that's kind Dang, of dang. That was like really perfect outs right there. That was lucky. But also, again, this is why I think Simo should have set these waters earlier because I think having them in hand feels pretty bad right now. I think maybe there is more that could have came from him having these engraved. He could have brought it back on the last turn or something. Kind of annoying. So this is uh, what the kids like to call not good. I am going to, I guess I will set one card and I will pass it to you. I didn't think I'd get this far. Trust me, I didn't either. <laughs> I'll bounce it. I don't need this dog. <laughs> sure, it's fine. Woo! I have to battle fader this. I was thinking about like just oh, taking man. it because I'm not dead, but. 400's a bit low. Go ahead. All right, please be a sick rip. Ooh. That is maybe the best rip in my entire deck. Uh. So Fortune's Future, I get to put Fortune Lady Light back to the grave and draw two. And wouldn't you know, I drew absolute shit. I'm in a normal Fortune Lady Water trigger future visions. So she'll get banished. And uh, I drew a second Fortune's Future. Fun fact, this is not once per turn. Cool. So we're just going to cycle a bit here. Uh, I have to pass here. I kind of think that might have been greedy. Like, I think since he has, okay, he has the effect failure, right? And he has enough life points to tank a hit. I think he has an opportunity if he left, like, let this water resolve and then did the draw two on the next turn. Because in this scenario, if he gets, like, assuming that MBT doesn't just, like, get a second monster um to like swing over like he might just attack over the fader and pass which means then you could go for an instant fusion play um with the water who would hit level five on the next semi fave and then you can out this and like you could go adrius and attack for game so i think this actually was a mistake to do the fortune's future because of that um like because it cuts him off from the monster while he has something to block because now i think he'll just fall too far behind with his future visions getting in his own way i don't know I fucking... yeah sure <laughs> see so he actually has game here had he done this correctly because this can't be warning either so yeah that was that's unfortunate <laughs> okay big Draw. big misplay big uh, misplay hope fire instant fusion i will grab my own cybersaurus what you doing there normal bud normal effect veiler no, you're not. Yeah, so I uh, oh, okay. finish Effect Veiler here, and then uh, I'm dead. <laughs> See, he could have, I mean, after that, he could have set water and, like, had Veiler for the bounce, so he still could have stalled. And I, but, yeah, he just kind of gave up, but he misplayed quite a bit there to, at the end of that game. That's unfortunate, because I actually think he could have won. He, he, I mean, I think he should have won. He, he should have won. We, we, we know he would have won, because the MBT topped a spell trap. His instant fusion will kill the cyber. Well, I don't think I was supposed to win that one, but here we are. No, you weren't. <laughs> the old history of Jenks special. Losing so, uh, games, you win. This is the fortune lady experience. Uh, getting completely just mind rotted by how much math you have to do with the levels and then losing to your own future visions. That sounds pretty accurate. You lost to your own play, Buster. Not to your own cards. Just saying. Uh, yeah. Oh. <laughs> my deck looks fine. <laughs> oh, it was one card for being such a nuts hand. If he drew dark, this hand is like actually crazy. And I'm going to do it again. Uh, hopefully I can at least force it to game three here. But looking at the contents of my hand, I do not even think that's possible. Good luck, buddy. You too. I'm going to elect to not to immediately lose the game. I will just pass. I thought you said you were electing. Uh, I think he should have set the water. Again, you don't care about this card being in hand. And like, let's say he draws any other fortune lady on his next turn he at least has the op option to like monster reborn and bring it back for a draw too because with these double fortunes future you can see a ton of draw power as long as you get to the dark so i would just try to like fast track to drawing a dark so you could allure 
not to. This is me electing not to lose the game immediately. Uh, well, okay. Uh, we got gores or something. Uh, let's go tuning. All will be known in due time, buddy. All will be known in due time. Mm, we're going to mill one. Okay. Yep. Not what I was hoping for. Uh, let's send wind up dog to the graveyard to quick summon draw. quick draw synchron. Sure. Let's future fusion. In mm, I'm not a fan of that. I feel like he could have, instead of pitching a card here, he could have just summoned dog and then instant fusioned and then held the quick draw for later. Like if your opponent doesn't have anything, you don't want to use these extenders. You want to like kind of play it slower, right? So if he wants to make the rank five, that's fine. Like he can use go tierist to play around gores here. Um, but I don't think you should discard, especially not Dog, because Dog is, like, one of your, like, combo cards in reality, right? So, like, you basically are using two extenders when you only had to use one. Okay. It's Instant Fusion, not the same card. Uh, we'll summon Cybersaurus. Nice. Go for rank five again. Go yep. for uh, Tyrus, perhaps? We are. Tyrus time. I'm going to normal Jugs. Okay. Combat. Oh. B -b 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 yeah, like I said, Juggler's whole purpose in this deck is to be discarded. So... Like, I mean, like, yes, it's, like, single target spot removal, but again, especially in a format where Tengu is running around, you don't really want to put this on. Although he, he does know Simo's not playing Tengu, but still, like, he could have, if he wanted to summon the quick draw, he could have pitched the juggler here. Either way, um, that was, like, really suboptimal to just do it like that instead of just normal summoning the wind up, because that's what they're for, is to be used to make rank fives um, with a single extender instead of two. Uh, let's go Tiras direct. 26. Anything here? Nope. Okay, 17. Hmm. <laughs> well, maybe I should have gotten even more aggressive. We'll go to end step, uh, trigger Tiras's uh, mandatory effect. We will detach Dude. the quick draw. I will hope this card does it. Oh, potential. It. We'll go to main one. Oh, God. I think I just have to do it. Uh, I'm going to instant fusion. All right. I will bring out Cybersaurus. Sure, yeah. I will reborn your quick draw synchro. Wow, you are hard up, but yes, that is fine. This is I'm actually really good. Overlay for my own tyranny. No. <laughs> what are you doing? So if he would have played this smart, he, he needs to make Adreus here. Hopefully he realizes and changes his mind, but like you need to make Adreus to detach to pop the juggler and then crash then you out everything and then mbt will be at very low monster count and then he also still can normal summon dimensional alchemist and banish a card which is also really good yeah <laughs> yeah of course yeah i'll just go to battle i'm gonna attack my tiras into your tiras they both die here right i believe so and they don't trigger correct that is correct then second main i'm gonna normal summon dimensional alchemist yeah sure i will activate the effect uh-huh that's insane Hold oh that's actually so good but it's so bad how he played this turn because like even if he went with this tiras misplay uh, the Alchemist would be 18 here, so he could have just swung over the Juggler, and you're fine taking that trade as well. So this is all just, like, mega scuffed. That's Lee. pretty good. Crap! That's all right. I'm so good at this game, oh, Joseph! That's, that's a good one. <laughs> Not good draw, so. I'm so good at this game. Get a thousand. Yeah, 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 for sure. Uh, oh, my God. You think that would have helped? You really think that would have helped? Okay. Uh, so you gain your thousand. So juggler can just destroy this alchemist, which isn't even that good. Uh, I drew three cards and still drew nothing of use. I'm going to take what? Four to 23. Uh, I am just going to, I'm just going to set two and pass. Go ahead. Uh, yeah, those cards aren't real. Uh, I'm going to go to main. Uh, <laughs> got the Tyrios. Sure. Uh, let's uh, go to combat. Tyrios in. I will take 1300. And jugs in. Ah, uh, if he had just played his hand so much better, like if he would have outed this juggler, I don't think he loses this turn. He would have actually been fine. Like there are so many better ways to make this play more optimal. So that's really unfortunate. The way I immediately lost the game was a lure of darknessing for uh, no dark. So good thing I didn't cool. do it. Well, <laughs> we had fortune's future, double water, and a win. All cards that do literally fucking. Oh, there's nothing. the dark. He was so close to dark. Want to run it back? Yeah, I. You know, I actually felt like okay about that, and then that that hand just was awful. Yeah, let's go to game three.
Yeah, I, uh, I, I punted that last one. There, I, I could have made Adrius instead of Tyrus, pop the juggler, and then crash. Nice. Okay, he learned. This is one of my favorite parts about the 2011 format. I've said this before, but I feel like whenever you play a deck in this format, um, to make your archetype function, you have to play it perfectly. And so when you recognize that you did misplay, you like realize, oh, I could have probably won had I done this a bit differently. And I think that's like one of the sickest thing about this format is it's like so very skillful, probably the most skillful format Yu-Gi-Oh has ever seen just because of all the intricate decision making and like the raw knowledge you need to play your archetype perfectly to succeed with it. Some reason I thought Tyrus like could also not be killed in battle, and so that's like that was just like messing with me. But like imagine reading okay. cards. I could true, have also true. just like straight up summoned Dimensional Alchemist pre combat and just killed the juggler and let <laughs> juggler kill nice. the alchemist, and then you at least don't have juggler on the field. You may have still been able to leave oh. me, but at that point, you know it is what it is. Oh. All right, uh, main one. That one. hand is so good. It's the dream hand. We did it. Oh, it's so good. Full upstart. Okay, I'll take the uh, thousand here. And I'll activate the card I couldn't activate last game, Allure of Darkness. Yep. Thankfully, I do have a dark, and thankfully, I have a Fortune's Future to accommodate it. Still in. So we'll put this to grave. We'll draw two oh. more. Uh, we'll upstart again. Okay, uh, I think we have gone through every single draw card in our deck now. I am going to... Activate Future Visions, your favorite card. I'm going to Normal Summon Fortune Lady Water, Trigger Visions so she gets banished. Sure. And then I'll Fortune's Future again. Okay. You've now drawn 14 cards this turn. That is correct. And uh, <laughs> that's the end of my turn. Go ahead. Cool. Yeah, that's that's the correct thing about Fortune Lady. Is this why I have so much like belief that this deck can be good? It's like when you see a turn like that where you just draw like a million cards, it's kind of insane. Although I will say I don't think he necessarily needed to do the water play. I think he could have saved it for later or done, you know, tried something a bit later. Um, because I think I almost would have rather like just put the water on board and then turned off your opponent's normal summon and seen if you could have like protected the the water for a turn um because if it goes to grave then you can dark but if not then protecting it for a turn also like opens up like potential birdman plays or something i don't know it's not terrible uh stand by me oh my god this is so funny uh we're gonna go quick draw uh, i will change. chain maxi oh oh no that's not how it works so uh if you know Dave from Who Needs Meta, he taught me this lesson. <laughs> Wise man, okay? Um, in past Edison, I think, like, it was immediately following Edison. They actually eroded quick draw, so it was a inherent summon, not an effect summon. So um, this maxi would not be able to be chained to the quick draw at this point in Yu-Gi-Oh!'s history. So Sash Boy Simo gets an extra draw because they don't know the ruling. Tragic, tragic. Oh, come on. So I need to draw more cards. All right. Uh, we'll go shell here. Sure. Uh, I'm going to normal shell. Trigger future visions. Gets How does it? Ooh, you know, spicy. <laughs> Ooh, okay. Protect it from the future visions. That's pretty so neat. So we will go drill warrior here. We are playing this card. I will draw a card. We'll go shell. Sure. I'll pay five. Uh, and then, you know, uh, combat. I do have battle fader. Sure. Uh, second main, I'm going to tag out. Uh, Yeah. See ya. Who needs future visions? You can just tag him out on your own. <laughs> if I, right, if I could normal summon this guy, I would. I think the extent of my play is me sacking off Battle Fader for dark, and I'll trigger future visions to get it. That's not bad, uh, because on next standby, it'll gain 400. So um, he could technically just put dark in defense, and then Drill Warrior can't attack over it. So that's when the play gets a little obnoxious for MBT to deal with. It banished. Yep. And I will set one and just throw it back. All right. Stand by a special back drill warrior. Sure. Battle Fader is also banished for its effect. Main one. Uh, I'm going to reborn targeting. Oh, God. You could have called set. I'm going to target dark. Going to target dark? I think just to blank your reborn, I have to. That's yeah. not bad. All right. Uh, I'm going to go. Oh, I got to get a guy back here. I was uh, about to say, did you ever add your monster oh, back? Oh, yeah. uh, We'll just. Nice, I forgot. I didn't even realize he didn't add the card back, but yeah, that is an important detail of Drill Warrior. <laughs> Go combat. Yeah, so I'll just take four from this. Uh, second main will tag him out. Uh, I'm going to normal a soldier as well. And he'll get banished on future visions. 
Standby, Dark Returns, its level increases, so it's now a 24. And I'll go to main phase one here. Uh, so Soldier's gonna come back as well as Drill Warrior. Can I do anything about that? Uh, I'm gonna Reborn target Water. That's pretty good. Water draw effect two. to draw two. Okay. All right, I've got a oh. million cards in hand and like nothing I can do with them. That's insane. You can just normal light here, get another water, draw two again, and then you can make a utopia and just kind of chill on it. Then he can't use, he can't really attack over anything, and that's kind of good. Uh, I'll normal light, trigger future visions, banish, trigger light. I can go for another blue here. Uh, she is a soft once per turn, so I can do this again. Mm -hmm. uh, this is just kind of crazy that I have this many cards in hand and I literally can't do anything. All right, uh, so there are 12s. I'm gonna get your thing back. Uh, that's quite funny. Maybe I should do that. Yeah, I'm down, fuck it. I already lost. Uh, I'm going to bounce water to hand to summon Birdman. I'm gonna sink and sink some damage in here. This would be what, 14, 24, 12. I think that's more than I would deal regardless. Yeah, we'll do this. Uh, I'm gonna go water, Birdman for ancient fairy dragon. <laughs> yeah, sure. Uh, we're gonna pop future visions, gain a thousand and add a field spell. Sure. It will deny you of the warrior. Obviously, Drill <laughs> Warrior still comes back. But that is not bad. That, that's a pretty okay I play, I guess. I will... just going to put that in attack, but that's fine. Oh, I don't like this attack. I think he, like, because, like, MVT then will have the option to ram the dark. Um, so if he just puts this dark in defense for this turn alone, then that no longer becomes an option, and that's kind of cracked when you have... Um, when you have waters engraved, because then dark can just swing over anything, and it seems kind of insane. But um, otherwise, you're giving the option for them for MBT to out the dark, which I guess isn't terrible. You have future visions plus light, so that's not like it's okay. But I'll just go to battle. I'll hit you for 24. Uh, second main, I'll fire another future visions, and I have way too many fucking cards in my hand, so I have to discard it end phase here. So I'm going to get rid of Dimensional Alchemist. Bro, it's literally just water, wind. These cards are terrible, especially in hand. Like like I said, wind is like on normal summon. It's it's just like really bad. Just, just get rid of them. <laughs> the rest of your cards are like pretty good. I would definitely keep Dimensional Alchemist when you have Birdmans and stuff banished too. And Fortune Lady Water. And I will throw it back to you. Okay. Uh, standby will bring everybody back. Just the Drill Warrior. You do not get the Wind-Up Soldier. But I want him. True. I think I am dead here. Uh, let's normal Wind-Up Dog. I'll get banished on Future Visions. Uh, she's a 24. I got to crash or else I am going to... Oh, who do I get back? God, nothing. None of these do anything. <laughs> uh, we'll crash the uh, the dark here. Sure. Because I can't kill her next turn. All right. I hope I'm not dead here. Wait, you can just use Ancient Fairy Dragon's effect again and turn off the dog. <laughs> uh, we'll draw. Don't think you are, unfortunately. I'll normal light, trigger light, uh. we'll grab the last target in my deck, which is dark. Yup. And Drill Warrior's gone now. You're going to get the dog back. I really don't think I care. Uh, sadly, I don't think I can do lethal damage here. I can do, what is this, 41? Sure. And that's it, I guess. Oh, this is quite funny. Uh, I'll fairy dragon again. Oh, Damn. come on! <laughs> he just realized it, but had he done that first and then activated the next future visions and then um, normaled the light, he would get his light back on his next turn, which is really good. Um, so that's just a little thing he could have done to optimize this play a bit better. <laughs> I was like, damn, this isn't like on summit or anything. This is pretty sick. All right, go ahead. And that is going to do it. It's factory, factory dog. You're just looking for a way to trigger the factories? Uh... No, I just needed a way to get to a five. So, I... so he probably had these factories this whole time, which is really sad because if he would have just activated double factory and he, if he was aware of priority, he could have just called priority and he could have double searched every turn which would definitely drastically increase his chances of seeing something useful like an extender um that could have broke him out of this uh like out of this border like out of the future vision so he could start normal summoning um yeah that's really sad because even with the future visions like getting popped and like keeping his cards banished like searching too like that's at least four cards out of deck 
Um, and like, it looked like he was drawing the windups potentially. I mean, I don't know how long he's had these factories for, but if he had double factory for a while and was just avoiding future visions, it's probably because he didn't know he had priority. And that's so sad because I actually think this game could have been won by him had he like abused factory with priority. Look at Ardreus. <laughs> you banished all my normals. <laughs> Okay, I get the deck. I see what's going on here. Yeah, I do too. Uh, I just hit done siding just so we can show off some cards in the yeah, deck. Yeah. But uh, honestly, that third game, that, that was pretty impressive. I'm not going to lie. <laughs> yeah, so that's kind of always been Fortune, uh, Fortune's problem. Uh, I mean, water is an unbelievable card. Uh, their draw spells are just pushed to hell. Uh, if you yep. draw them in the right sequence, I mean, you drew over the course of a three-turn game. Yeah, you were down to, what, 16 cards in deck, and you'd summoned every fortune lady out of there, yep. uh, which is it incredible. Unbelievable. However, as you, as, as you mentioned, if you draw them in the incorrect order, my yeah. hand game two was, if I remember correctly... Uh, Allure of Darkness, yep. Instant Fusion, yep. Double Fortune, whatever the draw two one is by returning one banished back to grave, and uh, Water, and another card that just did absolutely not. I think Reborn, Reborn is the yeah. sixth card. So there was literally nothing I could do, and thankfully you detached uh, a quick draw synchron so I could make my own rank five. I still think I was losing that game anyway because I just needed, if as soon as I got a way to get a... Nah, he just griefed that game pretty hard. I think he had a chance to play the game, but he just, like, played really suboptimally that game. Um, yeah, I don't know. He, he could have he could have done more. He, he just, like, hard punted it, like he said, so. Fortune Lady into the banish pile. Then I was going to be off to the races, but you need... Basically, future visions is your primary way of doing that, and if you don't have future visions, like, good fucking luck. It's just never going to happen. It's kind of weird because... Uh... Future Visions is just so good against my deck in particular. I really like this deck. Uh, I, people were experimenting with windups as early as the first release of cards. Um, but what you saw in this game was the reason why it really didn't catch on until we got a Shark and a Magician. And that's that the deck really doesn't have a lot of ways to get special summoned monsters out onto the yes. field. Here it would have blanked the Future Visions, but usually uh, you just don't have the time to like normal a guy and hope that it survives. Juggling. Yeah, it's not about normally a guy and hoping it survived. Like, we saw MBT mess this up with his, like, using two extenders to create a rank 5 rather than a normal plus an extender. Because in reality, like, what this deck really can do that makes it so strong is it can summon multiple rank 5s in a single turn. So in the event that you get warning on the first one, if you make a tier a stick, then you get out quite a bit of cards. Because there's a lot of back row cards in the format, like um outside of warning that are like negated by tiras so and it's the reason why you also run lance because the only other card that outs it is going to be d prison but like mirror force doesn't deal with it bottomless doesn't deal with it torrential doesn't deal with it it's literally just warning so if you can make two in a single turn uh then you have a way to out it and that also gives you five monsters for avarice as well which is kind of crazy but um yeah, like, it's literally just managing your extenders, like Cyber Dragon, Instant Fusion, and Quick Draw, as, like, these are what you do to make the rank 5. Um, and it's not like you have to make one wait. You always want to combine with a wind-up, and especially when they're replenishing themselves with Factory. Juggler is a decent deterrent, right? Like, maybe they yes. won't attack it, because he pops a monster. Uh, but mm -hmm. what you're trying to do, obviously, is hit Dog, hit Soldier, and then the tools to make rank fives in this uh, set are just unbelievable. Uh, Instant Fusion, of course. Uh, Cyber Dragon, of course. Uh, you get yep. to play Quick Draw Synchron because it's a five and incidentally get to do, like, Quick Draw Volcanic stuff as well. I do mm -hmm. really like this strategy, and the payoffs are there. Like, a Dog and a Soldier that have both activated their effects go into an Ardreus at a time when the Xyz pool is pretty middling. We don't even have a good four yet. Uh, no. So I do think that this deck does have legs, uh, but I mean, it, as you saw in game three, if you get high rolled on, which decks were very capable of doing during this period, I would usually just get run over. There's just I don't think he got high rolled on. I just think he didn't know he could use priority. If he was able, if he knew he like priority was a thing, which like both of these decks are September 2011 format, you know, you can see it on the website when you download them. Um, yeah, if, if he knew, which he should know, that you can use pri priority, then you'd get searches and, like, his play could have been a lot more optimized because I think he could have been abusing Factory way earlier in these games.
it's not a lot yeah, you can do. Your decks seem very fair by like competitive standards. Cause think about yeah. like what decks are running around at this time in like what late 2011, early 2012. I mean, it, the fact you can't really just hope that Cyber Dragon Normal Summon really gets you there, or like one rank five is going to do it. The other decks just have way more options. I do like with my deck randomly that Dimensional Alchemist is played in it because you're hoping so you funny. banish a fortune lady just because a it's good value but b then it triggers the effect and gets like all of your other cards online so i think that synergy is pretty nice but uh yeah i i can see why the fortune ladies just really struggled but like the cards you read them and you think damn all the draw power not True. once per turn and the ability to just modulate the levels so that you can access different variety of cards in the synchro and exceeds pool it's tempting it's there just sadly, I just don't think it's good enough, which is why we saved both of these decks for Jank. But I actually think this was like a good match for what it's worth. So guys, that's gonna- I, I agree. I actually think that was a cool match. I, I I like the fact that both are the, like those are like the two decks in 2011 that can like potentially make a rank five play. Um, Cause like, like I mean, like they talked about, like Adrith and Tyrus are really good cards, but they just didn't see a lot of play until like windups became more of a thing, like with like Magician Shark. But as like you kind of saw here like they're actually very playable in this iteration of windups and it's really not that bad um so it's cool to see that happen uh i will say that I, I do feel like both of them played pretty suboptimally in these games i think simo could have definitely won game one had he played uh better uh and then same goes for like mbt i think he could have won like that last game had he played um, had he played perfectly and just abused like priority, there, there's a world where like, you know, he just would have saw more cards and more cards means more plays. Um, but yeah, I think that wraps it up for this episode. We, we got many more to come, you know, as, as we saw from the wheel, there's still be doing more, uh, videos on like my deck list. So I'll keep reacting to it. Cause I think you guys like it. So, uh, yeah, definitely hit that subscribe button. And uh, yeah, that's about it. So thank you so much for watching and make sure you guys have a great time doing today.